I want to share with you something <coughs> excuse me something that I've done with my son uh who's uh now five, but we started doing this a little while ago and uh it's just fun with numbers, and the only thing you need to be able to do to do this is um well, you hardly even need to be able to count, but it helps if you're able to count to about 20. And that's literally all you need to, to be able to do to, to think about this. Um, but, uh, but we thought it was pretty cool, some of the stuff we came up with. And what we did was we looked, we were using pennies, but I've got these little blocks that are that kind of fit together into little shapes in a little better way than pennies do. Um, and we, t thought, we started out thinking about, well, what if we have a certain number of blocks. Here, let's count how many blocks there are. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll put these to the side. And what we wanted to know is can we group that, that many blocks into groups where each of the groups has the same number. And so let's see. Uh, I can group it looks like I can group it into three groups of two. And so that's interesting. Well, let's see. Can I group it into any other kind of groups? Well, if I move this one over here, and I move this one over here, I've got two groups of three. So that's interesting. There's a, so that it looks like maybe there's different, a different uh, ways. When, once you've found that a one way to group, uh, a number into groups, then maybe there's different ways. Well, let's see, can we group it into groups of four? Well, let's see, I can make a group of four here. Uh-oh, these guys are left over. I can't group that into groups of four. There's no way I can do that. So that's interesting, okay? So we could write, write down our result there. We could say six um, groups, and I'm going to write it down with words, but you don't really have to um, be able to read to understand what's going on here. We could say it's three groups of two. Well, one way to do that is I'm just going to say, let's say, put a group of two there, and then put a group of two next to it, and put a group of two next to it. And I could even, if I wanted to, I could circle the groups. So that's a picture version. There's the groups. Each one of the circles is a group, and each group has two things in it. And of course, that's just a picture of, one, of something I can do here. That's just uh, writing down what I can do with the blocks. I can put them in each of the groups of two, and I can put all the groups next to each other. And or I can. I, we also noticed that it was two groups of three. So I could make the groups like this. There's a group of three, and there's a group of three. Now the circles make it a little more clear what we mean by a group, that this like is its own little group, that's its own little group, that's its own little group. Uh, but it actually helps if we take away the circles. So for example here, I just have the blocks and I don't have any circles. And what you can see is that if I can group them, that means I can make them into a perfect rectangle. Okay, And these blocks are so nice I can actually shoop, put them together and it, it is really, it really a rectangle. But then you, it's hard to see exactly how many there are. It's hard to see the divisions between them. So I can separate them out a little bit. And it doesn't look as perfect a rectangle anymore. But you can still see that it's a rectangle. And there's something very pretty about that, in fact, that if you take this rectangle, the way I was doing my groups here is I was lining up the groups top and bottom. That here's one guy, here's his friend, that's a group. Here's another guy, here's his friend, that's a group. Here's another guy, here's his friend, that's a group. And that made, I, I was thinking of these two as a group, and these middle two as a group, and these two as a group. But you know what? I can take that rectangle. That's, I'm thinking of that as three groups of two. And I can just turn it. Well, now that was my picture for a group of three next to a group of three. That's two groups of three. And so that means it's not an accident that when I knew it was three groups of two, it's also the same as two groups of three. That might work in other cases. We'll see. And so that's going to be a really cool way to think about this, is it's about building rectangles. 
But you still can think of it in terms of the grouping language. That if Can I group it into equal groups, some number of equal groups? But it's going to turn out that whenever we can do that, it, we can make a rectangle. And we can think of it as a rectangle. So what we can do, in other words, in terms of this dot picture, we can make a rectangle out of dots, or we can make the turned version of that rectangle out of dots. That's two, day, two ways to write down six dots. And if you want to you know, try this without pennies or blocks or anything. You can just take a pencil, a pencil and paper and just start putting dots on and try to put them in groups and try to make them into a rectangular pattern. So I started with, with a number that does group. Well, maybe every number groups. Maybe, maybe the, this is something you can do with any number, but let's see what, if I, what happens if I just add one. Okay. Now let's see. Six and then add one. That means the next number after six. So six and then seven. If we're suspicious about that, we could recount them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So that's seven blocks. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to see if I can group those. Well, let's try and group them in twos. There's two. There's two. There's two. Uh-oh. There's one left over. Did I just not do it right? Well, well, let's see. I mean, even if you make that guy uh, have a partner, then this guy's left over. Well, what if you have this guy have a partner? Well, it's pretty easy to see that you're always going to have one left over. So there's no way that 7 can group in, into 2. So, well, let's do the rectangle thing. Let's make, not just have any way of, of organizing the group, so I'm going to try to organize them into a rectangle. I'm going to leave some space so you can see a little bit better. That's three groups of two, and then I try to make a rectangle. Oh, it's not a rectangle. It's a rectangle with an extra little thing hanging off on one, one side. Okay, so seven just doesn't group into twos. And uh, the way you say that is um, there's a name for numbers that group into twos or don't. Numbers that group into twos are even numbers, and numbers that don't group into twos that have an extra are odd numbers. And that's a really important uh, thing to know about numbers as they come into these two these two flavors. There's even numbers like six and odd numbers like like seven. But I'm interested more in in a, a more interesting question. Can I group seven in any way at all? Maybe I haven't tried grouping in threes yet. Well let's see. Oh yeah actually sort of I have. Because here's a group of three already set up for me. Here's a group of three already set up for me. And there's still one left over. Oh, I'm lonely. I didn't get to join a group. Oh, well, that's just too bad. It doesn't group into threes or twos. Well, maybe it groups into groups of four. Six didn't, but maybe this does. Well, let's see. Oh, this is trying to be a group of four. But wait a minute. Here's a group of four. And then I've only got three left over. There's no way that's going to be a group of four. Well, let's see. Let's be kind of, let's be really careful about this. Maybe it groups into fives. Uh, no. Big group of five. Now there's only two. That's not even close to a group of five. Does it group into sixes? I don't think so. Okay. And so there's no way. And of course, grouping into sevens doesn't count because that's not really grouping. That's just the whole thing. I haven't really made made it into multiple groups. So, gosh, this is a very interesting fact. Seven does not group. And uh, my son, who doesn't read yet, uh, he can't read that, but we, we agreed that group starts with the letter G, because it sounds the G sound, and uh, he had noticed on lots of street signs that when you put a red circle, oh, we should make red, when you make a red circle around something, and you put a red slash, I know it doesn't look very red on a picture, oh, actually it comes out pretty well, that means whatever you have in there, like U-turn or parking or whatever, you can't do that. And so we came up with this symbol for numbers that don't group in any way at all. And 7 is one of those numbers. There is an official number for that, the name for that. It's called a prime number. But uh, I let him come up with his own name for that. And it was an unnumber. And so his, uh, his definition was uh, we're going to call anything that doesn't group at all, we're going to call those unnumbers, because he thought those were just so weird, and they maybe even don't deserve to be thought of as numbers. But, I mean, they're great numbers. I think I love them, but, um, but that's his number. That's his name for it. And the official term is that it's a prime number. So in the next video, we'll, we'll do, a, do a bunch more of this and uh, see, see if we can find some other unnumbers or prime numbers, as they're called.